In the first part of this video, I went over the basic functions of the PO32. In this video, I'll be covering step multipliers, data transfer to and from your phone, changing patterns and recording effects, plus more. Uh, so first of all, we'll create a new pattern, going through various functions to end up with a chain progression of patterns at the end. So we'll jump straight in. Uh, first of all, we'll select a pattern uh, that's not in use. Uh, for this I'll select pattern 4 uh, and you can see that by the flashing red light when you're holding the pattern button uh, as we press play we'll have something. Uh, if we don't like this pattern we could delete it by holding the accent button here uh, plus the pattern button then it should show uh, a message DEL for delete in the top right hand corner uh, make sure we're on pattern 4, yeah we are so accent pattern and that will be delete that will be deleted now so if we choose another pattern uh, you can see there's no light illuminated for pattern number 4 up here which means it's an empty slot now so we'll choose this uh, and if we press play uh, nothing will happen because there's nothing on that channel yet uh, and if you go to edit mode you, you'll see the, the step sequence are playing through but nothing's actually recorded so uh, that just shows that our pattern's empty so the first thing we'll do is we'll set up some hats yeah, so we'll go to perform mode we'll find the sound we like we'll use this We'll just edit this sound to see how I, I like it. Going for a short, snappy, closed uh, hat. That sounds. That sounds okay. Right. Okay. So pattern number four. We've got our sound selected. Hold sound, and it will flash up and show you which sound is selected. So after that, we could either record live, which I'll show you how to do. Um, so we'll just highlight a few of these and see what it sounds like. Okay. So that's some basic hats. Um, you could also add shuffle or swing to your your whole pattern arrangement by holding the the BPM button and turning the A encoder. Uh, and it'll show up in the top right hand corner as five, uh, whatever number. I think the five's irrelevant. Uh, so you could set it from like 500 to 518. And you'll hear the difference in the swing as I change this. Uh, you can hear that's really robotic sounding with no swing at all. So I find that like 507 is a good level to have your swing settings set to. Right. So that's just got a swing on our pattern now. Um, so we'll select another sound. We'll go to perform mode and then we could audition our sounds here while that plays through. Let's clap in. I'll just edit this sound first. Okay, that sounds pretty good. Um, if you wanted to record this in real time rather than going into your step sequencer and pressing the buttons here, all you need to do is be in perform mode, hold the right button, and you'll see record coming up at the top right hand side of the PO. Uh, you see that displayed, and now when we can play this in real time so uh, and then you can go into your step sequencer to see which uh, steps are being applied uh, so you can see it's one and nine here so i'm happy with that you could add some in if you like just to add more flavor but i think i'll keep it simple um okay so We'll add another sound. We'll go back into perform mode. Uh, that's pattern 
As you can see, we've only got two lights highlighted here. That'll be our hats and our clap. Okay, so that sounds okay. I'll just record it. Right, so say you didn't like that sound we just added in. Uh, to delete a sound in your pattern, you could either select the sound, uh, which it's already highlighted here, that kind of snare we put in, uh, and go into edit mode, and this will bring us to the step sequencer, and you could uncheck the light here, because that's where our step was put, and now nothing will play. Uh, so I've just put that back in. Uh, if you want to delete it in perform uh, like real time, go into perform mode, uh, hold right uh, for record, and then hit the sound once uh, and hold it until the bar is finished. Uh, let the bar play through, and then that'll record nothing over it. If that makes sense, I'll show you. Okay, so that snare's hitting. So we'll hold record like we did before, and then just press the snare. Wait for the bar to play through. Now that's deleted that sound for us. Just if you want to delete a single sound within your pattern, that's quite handy. Right, okay, so we've got that. Um, right, we'll add in some more things now. Yeah, just add in a kick. We've got a kick sound sorted. Go into perform mode so we could edit our kick. Yeah, see how that works. So we've got our sound, our kick selected here by the flashing light. Go into edit mode to enter our step sequencer, and then uh, on every every beat of that bar. Uh, these 16 pads add up to one bar uh, altogether, so there's four beats in one bar, if you didn't know that already, uh, and these four first lights represent uh, the four beats. So now our kick should play uh, four to the floor style with, with our uh, pattern we've made here. Yeah, I don't like that kick, so what I'll do, I'll do that uncheck. Uh, go back into perform mode and see if we could find another or edit that sound. But I'll audition it while it's playing. So as long as we're in perform mode, it won't record. Sounding pretty good now, so we'll go into edit mode and put in our, our steps. Right, okay. Um, we'll add in some bass now. So we'll select our sound, bottom left, the bass sound here. Uh, I'll go into perform mode again, audition this sound. I'll play it through to see what will fit. Sounds pretty cool, but I'll, I'll go into the step sequencer and see if we could just put in some random stuff to make it sound good. Okay, so that's a good little groove. Yeah, too much for that. Uh, 1 on 14 now. Okay, so we've got that. We've got our bass uh, put in now to our pattern. Uh, you could also change uh, individual steps, like if you wanted to change the sound of just one of these steps, uh, you could do that by holding the step you want to change and turning A and B encoders. So we'll have it play through. So I'll change number 11 here, so we'll hold it when we're in edit mode. Uh, right, we're in edit mode, step sequencer. Hold the, hold the button. Okay, 
so now we've edited just that uh, step number 11 there we've edited the, the actual sound design of the of the bass sound so that's handy you could do that so you could do that for any any instrument to get uh, different types of variation within your your pattern that you're making uh, but if you want to change uh, all the steps of a certain sound uh, hold right and then the the a and b encoders when you're selected on that sound in edit mode so we'll hold right As you can see, that's changed all all three of the, the bass hits here to the same timbre, the same kind of sound. So that's handy, you could change the whole group and you could also change individual steps, change the sound of individual steps. Okay, so we've got that. So what we'll do is we'll select our hi-hat, which is number seven. Um, as you can see, that's the, the, the lights that are highlighted for our hi-hats here. So. Right, okay. so to add uh, step multipliers to a sound, you hold the step that you're wanting to change it. So only that hit of the, the hat will hold this uh, and press the BPM button while holding one of your steps. So we'll hold the step, press BPM, and then you'll see T dash something come up here, and it goes all the way up to eight. And this just adds in uh, like repetitions. So we'll see if we could hear it. Yeah, you can hear it's got a little shuffle on that. We'll add another one. This is a handy feature, you could add even more variation to your individual sounds or your pattern as a whole. Um, so if you're, if you're just jamming with your pattern, you can go into perform mode and to solo a sound, you just hold uh, any of the, any of the uh, sounds that are in the choke groups. Any sound that you hold in these choke groups will cut off all the other sounds. So if I just hold one of these, the hats will stop playing. So now I'll show you how to transfer digital data to and from your recording device, whether it be a mobile phone or field recorder. Uh, the reason, well the benefits of doing this is that you could save an unlimited number of patterns on your recording device for later retrieval uh, to the same pocket operator or even another pocket operator uh, and I'll show you how to do that. So first thing we do is record digital data onto our recording device. So, we need to put the volume on the PO32 right up, so it's as loud as it could be, so the phone could hear it. And we'll just turn the phone to so it's nearer the speaker. Press record on the phone, and then press write and sound together. Right, so now what we should be able to do is put this into receive mode, and then transfer the sounds and patterns back into the PO32, so we'll try that now. Again, I'll just put it in the same position before, speaker close to microphone, uh, and how we do the, the receiving is pressing the ACC and sound button, and you'll hear like a sci-fi kind of pulsing noise, like it's wanting to receive a signal, and then once that's done, you'll hear like a, an old game kind of acknowledgement noise. Uh, right, okay, so we'll go into receive mode, ACC and sound. 
and press play. Right, so uh, that sound at the end there was uh, acknowledgement that the, the pattern had been loaded back into the PO32. Uh, this is a quick and easy thing to do, it's just a bit annoying with that noise, but it can be done, and then we'll listen to see what's been imported back into our PO32. Yep, uh, not much in that pattern, but uh, I was just showing that for an example. Uh, that was the pattern I loaded in initially, and now I deleted that, and then loaded it into my phone, phone back into the PO32, and it sounds just exactly as it was. Okay, so now I'm thinking that'll probably be the start of my first pattern, that, and then one, well only the bass, and then the next one with the bass and the kick. Right, okay, so we've got that, so how we do this, we could uh, duplicate patterns onto different patterns, so we've got pattern number four select here, and I'll just, I'll see what these other ones sound like first. So I might want to keep these. So this is some dubstep thing. Okay, so it's probably easier if you do it like one, two, three, but I'm gonna choose four for a first one, six, and then ten. So I'll just double check, make sure these are. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah. So that's the one we made. Right, okay, so what we'll do here, uh, you need to hold pattern and then hold right. And you'll see uh, DUP for du duplicate up in the top right hand corner. And then while holding them to you press the pattern that you want to copy it over to. So we'll select number six um, and let it go. And then now number six will be the same as four. Right, okay. So now we'll copy, hold pattern, hold right, copy number four to number 10. Uh, and that'll, that'll be the same. So. And after the bar, after the bar, it'll automatically s switch to your next uh, pattern. Uh, I'll wait for the bar to end, even though you've chosen it while it's still playing. And you'll see the change of lights. Yeah, okay, so that's good. So what we'll do is we'll go into our first pattern and uh, we'll make this number one. So number one, we'll play through and see what we want to delete from this. Okay. So I'm going to delete the, the kick and the bass from this one. So we're on the bass sound, we'll uncheck these. We'll select the kick, uncheck the kicks that are in and now we should just be left with the hats and the clap. Uh, I'll add a snare in there just because it's sounding pretty thin. Okay, so I've got a snare here. We'll go perform mode. Okay. That sounds terrible. Okay, so we've got that as number uh, our number four pattern, so we'll move to our next one. Uh, so from this one, I'll uh, delete the the kick sound. So we'll select our kick. We're in edit mode, obviously, because our step sequencer showed up. So we'll delete these, and now it'll just be our bass sound. So we'll select that snare go into edit mode and then put in our steps so now we'll go between these 
a progression. Yeah, final one. Right, okay, so now we need to link these up. Um, and how you link these up is basically hold pattern. So we've got four being our first, six being our second, and then ten being our third. So you just think of these in one bar. So all you need to do is hold pattern and then press the button however many times you want that to cycle that bar. So we'll put the first one for four bars, and it'll come up with an L at the top right hand side. That for four bars, and this for eight bars. So now, when we let go and press play, it'll play through them patterns in the way we arrange them. And this is shown by the little flashing light on move. And you can count it as well in your head. So now it's switched over. I was in edit mode there, so that's actually recorded uh, that them effects in the last pattern there. So now I'll just play the one pattern, just because I've pressed uh, number 10 once. Okay, that effects in there with our arrangement now. So we could delete this. You need to be in edit mode. Press play, and then you'll see the lights flash. Now there's no effects that's essentially holding that is just uh, written over any effects that you've put into that pattern so that's a handy uh, thing to know because uh, you don't want to be halfway through a pattern muck up by adding in effects and not know how to uh, sort it out just say you do want to add effects to that pattern uh, say that you want to make this a, a, a better progression okay so you go four uh, six ten and then you want to add something else in so, you want a form mode where it doesn't record any of the effects. You can just jam over the top. Yeah, quite like that. So, if you find one you like, go into edit mode where it will actually record the effects in real time once you're playing. As long as you hold the effects button and press your desired uh, effects. So, we've made a pattern, uh, and say that you like uh, like certain, like the, the rhythm or the steps that you, you've made, you could actually transfer this to your DAW, not uh, directly, you can't uh, plug it in and then have it come up as MIDI, just think of it in terms of these 16 steps, as I said before, being one bar. Uh, and then you could trans transpose this to your piano roll in your selected DAW. So you've got your one bar, and then you've got your four beats of the one bar, and then for every beat you've got four steps. So if you can imagine that, go into your piano roll at the same time of watching this video, and you'll you'll see what I mean. And so say that you like the the hi hats that we've made, uh, and this is shown. Uh, for each like individual step, you could replicate this in the piano roll. You won't be able to replicate the, the swing as such, but you'll be able to do that within your DAW. Uh, so that's a handy thing to, to use, taking some inspiration from the PO itself and then transposing them rhythms to your, to your DAW, uh, which is a really handy thing to do. Uh, it gives you a more hands-on kind of approach to making your your patterns. You could set an alarm uh, on your PO32. Uh, I guess you would use this if you really like a pattern you want to hear it every morning. Uh, to do this all you need to do is hold sound and pattern and you'll see a little off being flashed at the top right meaning that the alarm's off and then all you do is turn the A and B encoders for hours and minutes and then set that to whatever time um, 
So we'll do that, and then you select a pattern that you want to play, or you could do your progression thing. So we'll select pattern six. So now that's your your alarm clock set up for whatever time you put in. And if you want to cancel it, just uh, hold sound and pattern again, and you'll see this flash up at the time of your alarm. And just turn the A encoder all the way to the left, and then it'll show up off eventually. And then that'll be your alarm set off. And then just select sound to get back. And you can double check to make sure it's off by holding sound and pattern again. Yeah, it's off, so we're good. Pros and cons of the PO32. Uh, of what I've found so far, uh, the pros of the PO32 uh, that it's stocked with quality drum sounds uh, that are that are great through whatever you're listening uh, from, whether it be your headphones through monitor speakers. Um, the performance effects as well are are really really handy. Uh, they're good for just mucking about with and coming up with different stuff on the spot. I'll go over them effects uh, last thing. Uh, it's very portable, it's aff affordable at 90, 90 pounds or thereabouts and it's an inspirational piece of kit that you could that you could carry about with you. Uh, and uh, partly the reason why I bought it is because it's it's quite an intriguing piece of kit and I love the love the look of it. Very retro looking and the fact that it comes with quality sounds is just uh, uh, a great great thing. Uh, the cons is that I've found is that you you can't mix the volumes of individual sounds. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a minor thing, uh, really. That's you only think about that when it comes to um, uh, making up different arrangements and stuff. But you could do this in your DAW as recording it as audio in single tracks or things like that. So that's a kind of a a miss. And also that you need to purchase the the extra microtonic to actually load other kits into your into your PO32. Uh, but apart from that, uh, I think this this is a great little uh, electronic drum machine. And if you're looking for inspiration or you're developing your your rhythm, I su suggest you get one of these. Because uh, once you know how to use it, then it just everything becomes second nature. Uh, so last thing. We'll select a pattern I've made. Right, okay, I'll stick with that one and we'll just go through the effects and uh, I'll just tell you which each one is. Um, yeah, so. Right. So, number one is half rate. Number two is distortion. Number three is squash. Number four is an echo fade. Uh, that's quite handy for uh, dropping in and out of bars or going as an outro. Um, okay, so we've got number five, pitched LFO. Six is an EQ sweep. Quite a good sounding little effects there. Number seven is actually a mega morph. Number eight is pitch bend up. Sounds pretty cool. Uh, number nine is pinch. Number 10 is like uh, 6 10, 6 over 8 quantization. It's kind of like a half step kind of sounding. And uh, that's good to uh, uh, add at the end of a bar uh, to give it a more variation and kind of a lazy feel to it. Sounds quite cool. Uh, number 11 is beat repeat. And then number 12 is a faster beat repeat. And number 13 is our FM. Number 14 is granular. Number 15 is reverse, the whole pattern. Uh, 
that could be handy if you're making samples, if you're putting this into your DAW and recording some stuff uh, that could be used creatively. And last but not least is number 16, our bouncing ball. Uh, and that's a good way to end your patterns, I guess, if you're making videos or whatever. Yeah, so thanks guys for watching the video. Um, if you've not seen part one, go watch that. Uh, but thanks again for watching. And if there's any questions that I've not answered or the things you're unsure of, just leave a comment in the box below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you. See ya.